All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. We are here today to talk about everything baseline protocol, what is and what's to come. And we're joined by the grandmaster and godfather of the baseline protocol, Mr. John Wolpert. I'm your host, Kyle Lacott. We've got some big fire, rapid fire questions to give to John around, again, what's happening today and what's to come around the baseline protocol and some new features to be launched as well. John, welcome. It's a pleasure as always. Oh, hi, Kyle. It's good to see you. It's good to see you as well. If you can, a little quick wrap as to what Baseline Protocol is for those who may be tuning in for the first time. Well, Baseline Protocol is a standard, uh, a way of a design pattern, a, a technique for uh, systems in different companies to uh, synchronize uh, their records uh, when they should, right? So if I say I have a uh, an accounts receivable system with an invoice in it, and you have accounts payable system with with, and it should have the same invoice in it because you need to pay me. It's important that it's it's a good thing if we both know that we have the same record, and in a verifiable way, and that uh, no neither of us can say, that, oh, I didn't get the memo, I didn't get the email. Um, and uh, the trick to that is. There's a couple ways to do that. One is you could put it all on a blockchain, but then that invoice is sort of available for everybody with access to that blockchain to see. So as I often say, uh, you know, blockchains are digital nudist colonies, which is really true. Um, and a public one is just simply one on a public beach and a private blockchain or private permission blockchain is one on a private beach. But anybody with access to a full node is going to be able to, you know, if, if a private blockchain with a full node, somebody's going to get hacked. It's going to make the whole point of having a private blockchain sort of irrelevant. It's not a very good design pattern for shared information where that information is sensitive, right? So how do we do it? Well, and also companies tend to like their own having their own databases that are not shared all the time, right? So uh, if you have SAP or you have Microsoft Dynamics or just a Mongo database or something on SaaS or QuickBooks, all of these systems kind of like to be their own systems. But there are times when records need to be synced. So you can also, instead of using a shared or a, a single source of truth approach, you can have a common frame of reference appro uh, uh, approach. And the common frame of reference approach says, hey, I've got my database, you've got your database, but we're going to use this other bulletin board over here and we're going to pin you know, things that look like nonsense, just cryptographic proof symbols to it in such a way that nobody would really know what was going on there. It just looks like a bunch of randomness. But we would be able to say, hey, because of this piece of randomness here, you and I can be sure we have the same thing in our respective systems. That's it. That's baseline protocol. And it's a standard because we all have to do it sort of the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you know, So over time, we need SAP and all these other companies, all these other products to be uh, baseline compatible, baseline compliant. That's the idea. It's not a platform. It's not a product. It's not a chain, not a token, not a scheme. It's not a business. It's a standard. And any technique, any, any company, any pro product plan, chain, scheme can use the standard. And that's what we're seeing today is the, the first companies actually implementing the baseline standard. Which is exciting. And you have some new news as well. Some big news for the community and the standard going forward. Uh, I believe, as I'll tease it out, the base ledger uh, is actually hitting to mainnet, or excuse me, testnet. What is base ledger uh, for those who may not be aware of it? Yeah, base ledger is a is the first L2, layer two um, blockchain uh, uh, solution or network that is uh, pinned to the, uh, to the Ethereum mainnet. Uh, and is the, the first one to be, uh, I can't say baseline compliant yet because the, the standard hasn't been, uh, uh, issued and promulgated officially yet, but it is kind of ahead of the game. And so base ledger was created by companies, uh, Unibright and provide, and they've been for a long time, been heavily involved with baseline, the standard work. And so they came out with base ledger, this, uh, this place that is always on. And it allows you to uh, put your baseline proofs, those little hashes, those little standards, or those little uh, um, you know, cryptographic uh, symbol on, on this always on bulletin board now called base ledger. 
So presumably there will be lots of these. You know, you can put your baseline proofs anywhere you like. Uh, but now we have at least one always on L2 that, that is in that that does that, at least in testnet. And presumably by the end of the year, they'll probably go to production. And then you'll have a way of very cheaply with fiat currency, you don't have to use uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, you can um, post your, um, your, your baseline proofs and synchronize your systems. Now you've incredible. always been able to do that. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was saying that's incredible. I mean, the, where this has gone, where this started to where it is today and how it's continuing to evolve and unfold. And you were saying, you know, tell us a little bit more about the baseline proofs and why these are so important. It sounds like they're, they're going to be necessary and going to be included in many different uh, aspects when those are working with base ledger and, and other future versions of it as well. Sure. The simplest thing a base ledger proof or baseline proof can do is just confirm consistency. It just says, I, I, have, I have proof that whatever you guys are consistent about, you're consistent. That's really the simplest baseline proof. But you can be more sophisticated. You can build um, uh, circuits that allow you to say, to string workflows together and say, well, um, not only are you consistent, but you didn't break any rules. Uh, we have an agreement that you won't go over a price, a certain price, and you didn't. And nobody... Even though there's this public thing out there that holds the proof of that, nobody could ever, and if not even with great encryption, you, know, uh, you, know, you can't just break the encryption and you still wouldn't have anything. Um, but you're, you're able to say this proof is not only proof that you and I have the same thing, but that I didn't charge you, I didn't overcharge you, or I didn't break a regulation uh, in the in the running of this particular workflow. So that's that's a uh, you can do really sophisticated things or you can do very simple things like, yep, my receipt is your, is the same as your receipt. Or you could be banks. You could say my debit is definitely your credit. Or you could say I'm a bank that needs to know that somebody else gave you the, another bank a credit uh, before I do something with them, right? So you could say it's, the way you do that today is a lot of APIs and, and uh, bank integration systems but maybe this bank doesn't have the ability to just jack into the other bank's system um, or use something like Plaid. There are, places, there are times when that just doesn't work. You're going to want to be able to say, if the you know in the future, banks could just be dropping these baseline proofs and uh, this other bank can be subscribed to that and say, aha, I'm going to grab that baseline proof. Yep. And I run it. And yes, I will now release funds to this other party. So that's another thing you can do with baseline proofs. A third thing you can do with baseline proofs that I think is pretty cool is, you know, everybody's talking about NFTs. Well, NFTs are fine, but they, they bewilder me a little bit, uh, at least a certain type of uh, NFT, which is the, I'm going to buy for a lot of money, a fancy record on a database called, you know, called an NFT. And that's not, and the, the thing I'm buying isn't even in that. It's on a, it's a GIF that's on a, uh, 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 on a, a publicly available server that anybody can go and access. And, you know, pundits or, uh, you know, proponents of this will say, well, yes, but it's like the museum, you know, any, anybody can go see it. And I'm like, yeah, but I usually can't leave with the Mona Lisa. Right? <laughs> Not most days, at least. And then, and then mint another NFT from the same file. And, you know, and you can't even assert copyright over that because you have to be able to, you have to be able to protect your copyright. And if you don't, so if you don't defend the copyright, you lose it. So if you just let everybody you know, download or look at the picture, then you're kind of done. Better way to do it, you can baseline that original file, make it, you know, and that original set of one, that bag of ones and zeros, you can put that in a private secret data vault of your own. You're the owner. If you buy it from me, I'll give you the private data vault. Nobody sees those numbers. Nobody sees those ones and zeros. But you put a baseline proof on the base on base ledger or, or anything that comes after that. And you can say, I, and, and you could mint a whole bunch of child uh, uh, NFTs from that to say, well, I am, and I can prove I am the third grandchild of this original document or this original picture or whatever it is without you being able to reconstruct the original ones and zeros perfectly ever. Not without, not without, wow supercomputers or anything. And you wow. could say that way I can say, and you could also mint a museum piece one, which, which is, has its project is, has its progeny with the, or is it, uh, 
is a child of the original. And you can use that for thumbnails and letting people generally see it. But nobody would, able, at least anybody checking the baseline line proofs, would ever be able to assert that that was the original owned thing or any of the children. And then you can do even cooler things by saying, well, I'm going to let, I'm going to make sure that the owner of the original gets a piece of every transaction of, of, uh, of the children being sold. That sounds worse than it I meant it to be. Right. <laughs> the, 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 the parent and child of, of files as well. This is, this is pretty important around non-fungible tokens or NFTs uh, as well, because I mean, the idea of a non-fungible token is so expansive and we're just beginning to see the early days of test use cases on all sides right consumer to enterprise to infrastructure all of this is still coming together but you and the team are, are painting this very exciting picture as how that next level that next wave of non-fungible tokens can be brought into this business environment and streamlined uh, from a documentation point a standpoint, as you you had just right. mentioned, With, without well. giving up without giving up on good security principles like, right. you know, I'm pretty sure my inventory, especially say say it's like a shipment of pharmaceuticals or something. Pretty sure you don't want everybody being able to find out about that. No, not your competitors <laughs> and not like counterfeiters or bad guys. Right. right? So you definitely, the, the, I think the general rule of thumb is data really should be on databases. And you should be good at protecting them and you should make sure that, you know, you air gap them when you need to, that sort of thing. Uh, but you, but, but hashes and proofs for blockchains, right? So the Ethereum mainnet in my, you know, for my money is the best final um, tamper resistance machine. It's going to, and it gives to the base ledger, which is faster and more efficient and less expensive, um, the tamper resistance quality that you want from the mainnet. So without having to drop every baseline proof onto the mainnet for whatever it would, it would cost. Base Ledger is, it's powered by a, a token called Unibright, but you don't have to pay with, with, you can pay with fiat and then behind the scenes that'll get converted to Unibright and Unibright will clear and settle these op codes as we call them. And that's that's great, that's good for Unibright, that's good for Base Ledger and Base Ledger and Unibright are related. So they, obviously they, they wanted their token to be part of uh, powering it. But the Base Ledger or the Unibright token lives on the Ethereum mainnet. So it's not like a, it's not like a, some other, you know, alternative mainnets. It's, it really does rely on the Ethereum mainnet right. and it's reverse geared. And this is key. So you can be an IT department mm -hmm. and use base ledger without worrying about the price of Unibright tokens going up or down and causing your IT budget to go crazy. Um, it's, yeah. it's geared in such a way that it's, you know, the, the community will, they set, you know, the governance system will set a price for putting a, a proof on the baseline or a baseline proof on the base ledger. And, and uh, you don't have to worry about it going up except in the case of that, you know, the price increases, but it's normal. This is um, incredible. And, and you and I, yeah. And incredible because you and I have had many conversations with the uh, baseline community and otherwise around you know, integrating, whether it be blockchain, DLT, or other technologies into IT infrastructures and how that is a massive change. It is generally very slow and progressive to make it happen. And now you and the team have put something together that is just so plug and play, if you will. Uh, and you don't have to worry about all of the behind the scenes action. You've got this easy uh, transition that happens on the back end, and you still get the value of this, you know, future forward technology and pieces that we've been talking about. This is this is incredible. And, you know, John, I, I want to understand real quick for, for those listening, and even myself, the impact of base ledger coming to testnet. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not just the announcement of base ledger. This is going into testnet where people can start building and developing. What's the impact that you and the team see on this? Uh, well, I think the impact is it's so much easier to, you know, you had to be a kind of a systems programmer and, and uh, you know, pretty good at what you do to uh, pretty good at, at dealing with raw code to deal with baseline um, up until now. And now you have tools that are now, uh, as of today, or as of uh, the 1st of September, are, um, 2021, are, are uh, going to be open sourced tools that should, I mean, I'll, they'll be e e even easier later, but they're a lot easier than they were before the 1st of September 
to uh, quickly like string up a baseline uh, or string up your systems to be baseline compliant or uh, capable and to drop those proofs onto this always on thing. So I could even see it being kind of the lazy developers option for even uh, internal integrations where you're trying to maintain synchronization and you say, well, I could set up a Kafka server. I could do that. Or I could just drop it on the base ledger. Right. You know, why not? Okay. You know, it's op you yeah. know, and, and you're, you're not spending money other than, uh, you know, some operating expense. Right. So it's right. more like as a service. And that's, and that's totally fine and, and exciting and awesome and all in the same package. And John, as we come to close here, where can everyone go to learn more about a base ledger, get access to the test net, begin building and testing, and also the baseline protocol as well? Baseline protocol is at baseline-protocol.org. And uh, you can now uh, sign up for uh, uh, and unsign up for meetings. Um, you, can, you can join the core devs team. You can join the outreach team, you can join the standards team and any other teams that we put up. You can uh, sign up for regular meetings. You can join the baseline show, which is Wednesdays at noon U.S. Eastern and Saturdays, 6 p.m. in India standard time. Uh, and you can so you can join those shows, which are, you know, Q&A and interviews and stuff. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's and we have a general central one once a month and we've just got lots of work uh, that are, that's going on. And most importantly, if you've got a product or a service, you can join, you know, get on the baseline wave and, you know, that hopefully will carry you in. I know that for companies like Provide are making seven figure deals with major, major uh, uh, brands, it, it, you know, and they're getting their, their shoe in, in, in front of the normal, so, uh, you know, service providers of record for those companies because they know how to baseline and these other guys don't. So if you get ahead of that, you can make some money. And, and I think go. you can do that really practically starting now. Um, up until now, you had to kind of be ahead of it. But now, now the tools should be there. Wonderful. Well, there you go, everybody. Get to know to baseline. Reach out to John. Reach out to the baseline community. Join and learn more. Baseline-protocol.org to find out more on everything we just talk, spoke about today. Uh, and also Base Ledger being live now as well. Join the test net, get a chance to play around and reach out to John or again, the community if you have any questions. John, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, this is a wrap for today. I'm your host, Kyle Licott. We'll see you back here soon.